I've been chosen to give him the praise. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you're born again, I'm telling you now, you've been chosen to give him praise. How many are grateful? Worship team, I suggest you don't go too far because I'm not sure what kind of direction this service is going to head. I feel like I'm driving a Ferrari right now. <laughs> Something in here. All right. Number one, say it with me, a chosen generation. Say, I am part of a chosen generation generation you were custom made to praise him I mean no God didn't find you by accident God found you on purpose the Bible says that Jesus declared that he had to go through Samaria. It wasn't on the way to where he was headed. It was out of the way. Why did he have to go to Samaria? Because in Samaria was a woman who had five husbands. And the guy she was living with wasn't even her husband anymore. She gave up on all that. And she was at the well looking for another man. And Jesus said, I got to go to Samaria. Why? Because Jesus knew the way she hungered for relationship when he touched her with his power, that same hunger would be turned to him and he would then get a praise out of her. Somebody act like God knew when to find you, where to find you, and how to get a praise out of you. Come on, somebody! First Peter 2.9 says... Say, say this with me, say, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light say i'm chosen the word chosen comes from the word eklet ekletros in the greek it means ek out lego it's latin and it means to gather or collect but we get the toy lego from it means one that was picked that is funny from the larger group for a special service privilege and purpose how many have ever built a lego set how many were too poor to have a lego real lego set you had like plego set from pick and save remember pick and save before they got bought out by big lots come on and he, and he couldn't afford no real lego so you went to pick and save and got the cheap lego it didn't even really work come on but you did what you had to do and when you're building a lego whether it's a legit lego or a pick and save lego and you're building that Lego, you get to a point in the maps where they say, you need this piece now. And you have a pile over here and you get frustrated and sometimes you feel like you lose that piece and you get mad. My kids still get mad and Joshy would get mad. Now he's not really into Legos. Now Noah gets mad and just like, where's my Lego? Because he knows he needs that specific piece because that piece has a special purpose. Well, this is, this, what, what, before there was a Lego, there was this word called chosen. And God says in the pile of darkness, in the pile of people that are buried, in the pile of abuse, pain, and addiction, I went into all of it and I picked you out. Come on, turn to somebody and say, he picked you out. He chose. He didn't have to choose you. Some people say, you know, I chose the Lord. You didn't choose him. He chose you. 
We're going to get this straight. Somebody said, I found the Lord. You didn't find the Lord. The Lord was never lost. He found you and me. He picked me and you. He chose me and you for a specific purpose and a specific assignment and a specific plan. And the number one plan is he wants to get a praise out of your testimony. I looked up the word praise and one of the words means when you praise God, you praise him because of his goodness and especially his miraculous power. How many know sometimes the devil tries to put a bad day on us? Come on. The tire's flat. The dog's acting silly. Come on, light bill due. Money didn't show up. Back's acting up. And somebody backed up into my truck. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but how many know you're not going to let the devil steal your praise? Because no matter how bad of a day it is or a season, how many know it's nothing compared to the hell he brought us out of? Amen? It's like when some of you told people you're going to church for the first time, they, they looked at you like you were crazy. Where are you going? I'm going to church. Like I, I, I told one of the guys that was working over there at the property, and he said, uh, I said, you're going to church tomorrow? And he laughed at me. Ha, 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 ha. And I said, keep laughing. But if he decides to choose you, you're going to laugh all the way to church. You just ain't chosen yet. But the time will come, he'll choose you. And you'll stop that laugh quick. But really, if you would have told somebody, it's like a 104 in the middle of July, and you're in the house of God, and you like parked down the street and walked over here, people would have talked to you like, what? You, July, you hung over. You'd, still, you'd go somewhere else and you're like, yeah, but that's not me anymore. I'm going to church now. Because he chose me. I love Isaiah 43, 21 in the Message Bible. It says, the people I chose, the people I made, say God made, especially for myself. Now this is interesting. In the Message Bible, I, I want you to get this. I want you to actually quote it. Say, a people custom made to praise me. So God says, I custom made you to praise me. I know I'm custom made. God knew exactly what you went through in life. He knew all the hell some of you had gone through. And then he says, when I get done with her, when I get done with him, the only thing they're going to do is they're going to praise me. Can I declare something? Let me wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to break something today. In Jesus' name. Jeremiah 13, 11, in the good word translation, God's word translation says, as a belt clings to a person's waist. How many got a belt on? I got a belt on. It's pretty clean. I ate some Lucille's the other day. I was doing good, too. And then the conference came, and the devil showed up and brought me Lucille's biscuits. I actually didn't eat those biscuits. And then somebody had an idea to, to make fried Oreos. If the devil ever created a dessert, it's a fried Twinkie or a fried Oreo. How many of you ever had a fried Oreo? It's demonica. All right. How many of you ever had a fried Twinkie? Like a, yeah, see? 
I don't even try to, like, they have fried Twinkies? Yeah, yeah, and I don't want to be tempted. I'm just going to go. Or Krispy Kreme donut when the light goes on? No way. A spiritual brother. Okay, now. Say, as a belt clings to a person's waist, so I have made them to cling to me. How many have ever been around somebody who's clingy? Don't raise your hand, because <laughs> you might be sitting next to them, and they're like, I know you're talking about me. And you're going to, you know, fight it on the way home. So stay in the spirit. You'll be like, yeah. How many have ever gone out or dated somebody who was clingy? Don't, don't, don't. don't. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, my God, Pastor, you don't even know. I, I got to get a restraining order on that joker. Come on now. Somebody who's clingy, it's cool at first, like, ooh. And then after a while, you're like, really? You need to get a life. <laughs> like a belt on your waist after you ate Lucille's barbecue. I'll go OG on you if you're from Whittier. Kristen Pitts, come on, somebody. Some of you don't know about no Kristen Pitts. Now watch. Or burrito track. That's over. That's all she wrote. And God says, I have made them to cling, not to Michael, not to Sarah, not to Rebecca, not to their job, not to their career, not to their education. I made them to cling to me. That speaks of desperation. That means when God saw me, he saw me clinging to methamphetamine. He saw me clinging to perversion. He saw me clinging to anger. And I clung to it like an identity because I needed it to survive. But God knew once I step into your world, I'm going to remind. Oh my. Methamphetamine ain't got a place. Perversion ain't got a place. Anger ain't got a place. And the way you clung to that till three in the morning, you're going to cling to me. Somebody ought to shout like God made you to praise him. So am I clingy? Yes. To God. I need God. And I know I'm talking to a whole bunch of folk in here. You look clean and you look all nice and you look polished up. But if it wasn't for the Lord that brought you out, some of you would have lost your flipping mind. Don't, don't sit there, sit diddy and act like you got it all together. If it had not been for the Lord, some of you would have died a long time ago. You feel something moving in here, huh? You know what that is? That's the spirit of gratitude. And God says, I did this so that they would be my people. And they would bring me fame, honor, and praise. This particular psalm. I'm about to quote, this is, I don't know if you're going to be able to comprehend it, but we'll try. Was written, now, I, I don't, I'm going to slow down here because this is cool. Tell your neighbor, 979 BC. You know, BC, that's before Christ died. So you have BC and then AD, zero, after Christ's death, then one, two, three, four, five, six, and here we are. 20, okay, so how many years ago was the promise or the word I'm about to share with you, how many years ago was, was it written? This is like an arithmetic. Shout it out. Yeah, because you were in the earlier service. Don't act like you got it all like that. Tell your neighbor, this is 3,000 years old 
Tell your neighbor, if you live to be over 100, you did good. So this is like, this will be 2,900 years older than most of us will ever live our lives. This is old. We would have to live like 10, 20, like 30 lifetimes. Like 30 lifetimes at 100 to be as old as this promise. Yet, this is the very promise in the book of Psalms that Peter Crow quoted in 1 Peter 2.9 about a thousand years later and it was talking about a people that would come. And those people that the scripture is talking about is me and you. And it says, this people will be created to praise the Lord.